All right, it's time for some SpaceX news. So on Tuesday, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 from California with 131 payloads aboard. Elon said over 100 satellites launched. Then last Wednesday, Starship Flight 7 launched from Starbase. Uh, the launch went smoothly with Super Heavy Booster returning to get caught by Mechazilla. That was, again, breathtaking. Unfortunately, though, SpaceX lost contact with Starship itself. We later found out from Elon what happened. Elon said preliminary indication is that we had an oxygen fuel leak in the cavity above the ship engine firewall, and that was large enough to build pressure in excess of the vent capacity. Apart from obviously double checking for leaks, we will add fire suppression to that volume and probably increase vent area. Nothing so far suggests pushing next launch past next month. Elon went on to say success is uncertain, but entertainment is guaranteed. And I just want to point out, the Starship that blew up, that was a Block 2. That was a new iteration of Starship, right? So they had just come up with a whole bunch of new things on board. And when you have new things, things go wrong. Uh, and what you can see here is seen from Turks and Caicos Island of the blowing up Starship. Um, the FAA has grounded further flights of Starship until a pending investigation into the incident. But we should point out that this explosion was well above where aircraft fly. So there was no risk to people or aircraft. Um, this is all thought out well in advance. On top of that, not, not only was it just like, oh, lucky was above, they have people at SpaceX whose entire job is to make sure that all the airspace from takeoff to hopeful landing is going to be completely safe no matter when or how the Starship might blow up. Um, so all of this was well thought out in advance. That's why all we've seen are beautiful, sparkly, glittery images of the destroyed Starship re-entering the atmosphere. And we haven't heard about any airliners blown out of the sky by debris. Terrible, said SpaceX thermal tiles washing up on the beach of Turks and Caicos this morning. Elon said improved versions of the ship and booster are already waiting for launch. He went on to say atmospheric reentry speed is more than twice as fast as a bullet from an assault rifle, and this is the largest flying object ever made. It will become as routine as Falcon rocket landings. Seems like I should explain what the game plan is for getting to Mars in more detail. Any individual launch is not very important. What matters is the expected date when Mars becomes a self-sustaining civilization. And then SpaceX went on and issued a statement showing that basically what we just said, everything was safe. And Elon said the booster flight was a success. The ship flight was a quarter successful, hence cup being five eighths full. New ship forward flaps, higher thrust engines and tile adherence on ascent were tested. Improved heat shield performance was the only major thing that wasn't tested, along with the PEZ payload dispenser, probably solved in next month's launch. The nine meter diameter version of the Starship will probably fly about 10,000 times. So this is barely a bump in the road doesn't change the likely date at which Mars becomes self-sufficient. And then we have this awesome picture of 33 Raptor engines, uh, as Elon says, with enough thrust to lift a skyscraper off its foundations. And you can see one of the new changes to Starship Block 2. Elon said you can see the much higher propellant mass fraction of the new ship designed by the percentage of rocket that is frosty. And so that white there, that's not paint. That is actual frost. And we just want to remind everyone that not only do the Mechazilla arms catch the booster, they also lift Starship into place on top of the booster. Now, we asked our patrons this week in the Patreon poll about Starship. Um, we'll share the question and results later in the show. So stay tuned for that. Now, as if Starship 7 and 100 satellite mission wasn't enough, SpaceX launched their 100th Falcon from Pad 39A at Cape Canaveral on Wednesday, a double NASA moon mission. The Falcon 9 carried Firefly Aerospace's Blue Ghost Lunar Lander, which aims to land in Mare Crisium on the moon, carrying 10 NASA science instruments. The mission will gather data for about two weeks on the lunar surface. And iSpace's Resilience Lunar Lander targets a touchdown in Mare Frigoris, known as the Sea of Cold, located in the northern part of the moon. This mission will take a longer route, expected to arrive in about four or five months. Who's ready for vacations on the moon? Our fungineers think it might have happened something like this. We're well on the moon. moon. Gray Bull Rescue posted, thanks Elon Musk for the site visit with LA Fire Department. Starlink is the answer to disaster and war zone communications. We use it on every mission. Can't thank you enough for your generosity and insights. Excited for next week. Gray Bull Rescue, like you, knows what the private sector brings. And Elon said, these guys are cool. And I just want to point out, this is a nonprofit that goes wherever they're needed and they help out and uh, Elon is helping them. SpaceX then posted, in response to the LA fires, the Starlink team has provided 1,350 free kits to fire departments and other disaster response organizations from Orange County to Malibu, in addition to applying free Starlink service for thousands of customers impacted by the fires in the LA area. 
And Amuse posted, Insane, Los Angeles Fire Department whistleblower reveals that Governor Newsom ordered them to remove Elon Musk from the command post and to return all the Starlink satellite systems he donated to the department. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Starlink then posted, Starlink is now available in Tuvalu, one of the most remote island nations in the world. This marks the 120th country, territory, or other market where Starlink can provide high-speed internet. And that is where it is, 700 miles from Fiji, over 5,000 kilometers from Australia. Wow. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for watching Now You Know Clips. You can watch full episodes of Tesla Time News on Tuesdays and in depth on Fridays. Just click the link down below and head over to the Now You Know channel.